Now the easiest, yet most essential part of kicking a football is finding your initial target zone. The target zone, in essence, is where you want to kick the football, your aiming point. For me, I like to take an object above and beyond the uprights. In a controlled environment such as this, I'd use the center beam. In the stadium, I like to pick the flagpole on top of the scoreboard or a letter or something on the scoreboard, something that's going to stay stationary and allow me to find an aiming point for my kick. Now as you're running on the field in high school, obviously as a kicker, you're going to have your block with you. You want to align that block through your target zone, through the center, and to your spot, as I'll demonstrate here to our uprights. The second thing you need to understand when you're kicking is where the sweet spot of the football is. For high school, college, and professional footballs, the sweet spot of the ball is located about two inches down from the center of the ball. The center of the ball is obviously the widest point here. You want to kick below that to achieve the necessary elevation to get the ball over the line of scrimmage. Yet you want to kick high enough that you're able to get enough distance on the ball. That's where you find the sweet spot. Again, about two inches down from the center of the ball is where you want to make contact. In thinking about proper alignment, you want to focus on your stepping pattern. The key is to focus on an imaginary line through the point of the ball, through the snap of the ball, and through your target zone, which should be near the middle of the uprights. You want to take approximately three controlled steps back. Now, it can vary a little bit, but you still want to make sure that you can approach the ball with your two-step kicking pattern. For me, it's three soft, controlled steps. Now, it's essential that these steps be very consistent. In essence, they should be the same every time. You should be very consistent in your stepping pattern. A way to check this is to use a tape. Mark a piece of tape at your heels and work on your stepping pattern. You can either do it with your eyes shut or without looking back, and you should be able to get to the same spot each and every time. Once you achieve this spot and you feel like you're in line with your target zone, we're going to take two steps over. Now, some people take three. Personally, I like to take about one and a half. It's not as important how far over you go, just that it's consistent every time, consistent in width and in your 90 degree angle. Each time you come over, you need to make sure that you're not coming too far forward near the ball, which will force you to fly past the ball in your approach, or that you're not coming too far back, which will leave you too far from the ball to comfortably get there in your two-step approach. So from your line, make sure you're coming, again, two steps over, or one and a half, whatever it may be, and that it's consistent then you're ready to kick the ball. Focusing on the stance for a second, after I've taken my steps over to my necessary width, I need to make sure that I'm in a relaxed athletic position, not so tense where I'm in a fight, and not so relaxed that I can't act on what's in front of me. You need to be relaxed and ready to move. As soon as I get over, I like to make sure my feet are in the correct position. Now I'm kicking the ball this way, not that way, so I want to make sure that they're pointing a little bit at my target zone as opposed to right at the ball. This will allow me when I bring my steps to bring my hips through to my target zone. Working my way up now to the body, you want to be relaxed again and over the balls of your feet, ready to act on what you see in front of you. You can't be leaning back on the back leg. You want to have a little bit of weight over the front leg and ready to go. This will allow you to roll over that front step and get into the kicking motion. People ask me all the time, what about your head? What about your eyes? What should I look at? One school of thought is to look at the ball. I really like to look at the, at the spot of the ball right here where my holder is going to put it down. Once I get set and I feel comfortable, my eyes are solely focused on his finger and where he's putting that ball down. Once I see his hand come up, I'm ready to come through the ball and hopefully make the kick. Another common question I get a lot from kids is they'll say, Travis, when do I start my steps towards the ball? For me, I like to go on the holder's finger. The holder's going to be in a position ready to receive the ball from the snapper with his finger on the pad for you. So what you want to do as a kicker is simply be ready in a comfortable position and as soon as you see that snap in your peripheral vision and you see that holder pick his finger up, you're coming with your first step. Some kickers like to take what I call a cheat step or a jab step, and that's fine with the left foot. I come through with my right foot first. A lot of people will come and take a little cheat step with the left foot. Either way is fine. As long as you're moving on that holder's first movement, you'll get the kick off in time.